Tableau is one of the best data visualization tools out there for aspiring data analysts to learn. A lot of people have been telling me that they want to learn it, but they have no clue where to start. If that describes you, you're in luck. Because today, I'm going to show you step by step how to build a Tableau dashboard that's going to help you land your first data analytics job. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to get a free Tableau public account. Then we're going to find the data for our dashboard on Kaggle.com. And once we get that, we're going to make some insightful charts and we're going to package everything into a nice dashboard and publish to Tableau public. And at the end, you're going to share your awesome dashboard on LinkedIn. How's that? Sound fair? Let's do it. All right. The first step will be to get a Tableau public account. You just need to go to public.tableau.com. And I'll put the link in the description as well so you can easily follow. So once you're on this landing page, you just click on this main button to sign up for a Tableau public account. You just give them some basic information and you should be good to go. All right. Once you sign up for Tableau public, the next thing we need to do is to find a data set to build our dashboard on. I like to use Kaggle.com because they literally have all kinds of data sets you can think of. Same drill here, right? Just sign up for an account if you don't have one already. And then once you sign up, uh, once you land in this landing page, on the left here, you can see an option for data sets. And once you click on here, uh, you're able to find all kinds of data set you can pick. So I browsed Kaggle for a little bit and I settled on this e-commerce business transaction data set. And I'll tell you exactly why I picked it. This is a good data set to analyze because it has a lot of different dimensions or traits that you can build insights around. So this is one thing to keep in mind, right? You're welcome to use whatever data sets you want, but it's going to be rich in the category that it has. Otherwise, it won't be good for data visualization, which you'll see why in a second. Now that you've signed up for Tableau and we have our data set, let's get the ball rolling on creating our dashboard. So once you log into Tableau Public, uh, you're going to see this landing page. And I want you to click on Create and uh, click on Web Authoring. And it's going to prompt us to upload our data set that we just found. In this case, you will upload from computer and just make sure Tableau has the data. Once your data finishes loading, Tableau is going to take you to the screen where you can see your data source. And then in the bottom left, two tabs, one is your data source. And then the other one is sheet one. So we can just go to sheet one. And this is where you're going to start doing some of the Tableau magic. So once we're on sheet one, on the left here, we can see all the data that's available for analysis. So I'll give you a pro tip in Tableau, right? So if you look at all the blue fields, they're generally like text, names, and dates. And the green fields are usually numbers. Let's do some simple data analysis, right? Let's drag the country to rows. And then let's say we want to look at the quantity that's sold in each country. Very cool. And then one thing you can do is that you can sort the country by a field. In this case, we want to sort by quantity sold. It, Tableau just automatically did it for me. I want it descending. So here you can see that we sold the most quantity in United Kingdom with Netherlands following as a close second. And then there's a bunch of other countries. All right, with our warm up run out of the way, let's create our first visual together. So in order to add a new worksheet, you go to the bottom left and click on this button. And since this is a business data set, let's do a revenue over time visual. And if you look at the data that's available here, we see price, we see quantity, but we don't see revenue. This is where you have to calculate the revenue number yourself. Fortunately, Tableau has a function called calculated field that makes it very easy. So all you have to do here is that you right click on quantity and then go down to create and choose calculated field. And here you can ask Tableau to multiply quantity by price, which will just give you the revenue number. And then I will name the field revenue. Click OK. And then drag revenue into rows. And now you're seeing the revenue number here. And then if you want to be precise about it, the revenue is showing up as a number instead of a dollar amount. What you can do is that you can go up to this revenue number and you right click. And then you go down to the place where it says format number. And then instead of automatic, you will select currency standard. And now it has two decimal, which we don't want. Let's do currency custom with zero decimal places. And now it will show you the dollar amount. So we want to drag date into this visual. Before you do that, you want to convert your date to continuous. Otherwise, your chart will look very weird. 
So here we have it. Uh, let's drag date into column. And now you have revenue number from 2018 to 2019. And it went up quite a bit, uh, which is always a good trend to see. And up here, if you want your data to be more granular, you can click on the plus sign for your data to show in more intervals. So once you expand the data to week, you see very clear seasonality patterns. And earlier I said that we have better revenue data in 2019 versus 2018. Turned out that's just wrong because for 2018, we don't have complete data. It's only December. But either way, this is our first visual. So right click on the sheet and then I will rename it revenue over time. With our first visual out of the way, let's create a couple more for our dashboard. So when you create dashboards, you have to keep in mind that it's supposed to answer business executives' questions, right? So if I were running this business, what else would I like to know? So what's my best selling products? So let's do that next. Let's add a new sheet. And then in the rows, I'll have product name. Oh my goodness, there is a lot of them. What I would do here is that I will probably only look at top products. So in this case, uh, right click on product name and sort. And instead of data source order, I want to do descending based on revenue. So as you can see here, popcorn holder along with a couple other things are actually doing the vast majority of our revenue compared to some of the more fringe products as you start to scroll down a little bit more. And the same drill as before, we want to make sure our revenue numbers are formatted properly and showing up as actual revenue instead of just numbers. So here, let's pick zero decimal. Awesome. So now we know how much revenue each item did. To make our dashboard more engaging, this is actually a good opportunity for us to turn this table into a visualization. So on the top right of your screen, you will see this button called Show Me. Simply click on that. And for this use case, I like to use a bar chart. And voila, there you have it. As you click out, you see that um, we have all the products revenue ranked from top to bottom. And as you hover, you see the revenue. And sometimes to make the dashboard more interactive, what I like to do is that I like to add other stuff uh, into the tooltip of the dashboard, which we'll see in a second. So let's do quantity. So once I do this, what happens is that when you hover over a specific product, it's going to show you the revenue, but it's also going to show you how many of it was sold. And sometimes people prefer to see the exact revenue number spelled out. That should be pretty easy too. So simply click on revenue and drag it to label. And now you have all the revenue showing up in your dashboard. Pretty neat, huh? And oftentimes your stakeholders might want the data to be even more visual. So what you can do is that you can drag revenue to color. This will automatically put your revenue number into a color scale with the most revenue being the darkest. So I think this chart is actually in a good place. We will rename it. Let's name it revenue by product. All right, good job. You just finished our second chart. Let's create our third chart. All right, now we understand our revenue trends over time and we understand which products are our best sellers. Now, if I were running the business, the next thing I would want to know is that which are our largest markets and how are things changing over time? So in this case, I will pull in country in rows and then let's again do revenue. And then in the column, let's do date. Okay, this is not what I wanted and this happens in Tableau sometimes. So I'm going to go back to the show me function and see what I can do. All right, let's try that again. Let's put date into columns. And then I want to look at this at least on a monthly basis. Okay, let's drag in revenue. Okay, this is not too bad. So instead of a line chart, because I want to break down by country, I want a bar chart. Okay, this is shaping up a little bit more. This is looking a lot better. And now I think the natural next step here will be to drag country into color. Okay, so earlier we saw that this is a data set for a UK e-commerce store, and it looks like the vast majority of their sales are coming from the UK, which kind of makes sense. So now we actually have a chart, but the other problem is that we have so many countries to the point where I don't think this bar chart is telling me a lot of information because it looks so busy, right? I know most of the sales are coming from the UK, but outside of that, it's really hard for me to distinguish 
between the other countries. In this case, what I will do is that I will go back to sheet one and look at the initial EDA that we did. And I will replace quantity with revenue here. And I will look at the top five countries. UK, Netherlands, EIRE, Germany, France, Australia. Okay, that's good enough. And everybody else can just be others. Go back to our chart, right click on country and go, go down to create and then select group. And now I want you to check every country and then uncheck the top five. So in our case, UK, and then we have the Netherlands, which should be right around here. And then EIRE, Germany and France. Here we go. Okay, now you select group and you will name this group others. And then you will name this field grouped countries or clean countries, whatever you want. And now just save it. And now replace the country field with group countries that you just created in the chart. And voila, here you have it. Uh, now the chart actually looks a lot cleaner with just six total countries. Now that we have three different visuals under our belt, I think now is a good time to create our first dashboard and bring everything together. So again, go to the bottom left, but instead of creating a new sheet, uh, this time you will create a new dashboard. And this is the little button with four little windows. So the first thing you should do with your dashboard is to change its size. By default, it's a thousand by 800, and that's a little bit too small for my liking. I generally change it to generic desktop. This way it's 1366 times 768. But this is one of those things where you can do wherever you want. Before we start adding in our charts, what I like to do to keep things a little bit clean is to add different containers. So I will add vertical containers. And what this does is that it just structures your dashboard for you. And I usually like to have two vertical containers, one for the title of the dashboard, the other one for the actual content. All right, I understand this is personal for a lot of people, so I'm just going to do this real quick my way. And on your end, do whatever you want, play with it, and just make sure the, the chart is what you want it to be. All right, now that we have a general structure of the dashboard, what I would do is that I will add a title and I will add some filters. So select text on the left. And then let's name this dashboard, shall we? E-commerce sales performance dashboard. And then center it and bold it. Here it is. And for things like this, I generally like to add a couple of filters so that your end user can play with the data a little bit by themselves. So to add a filter into your dashboard, simply select one of your charts and then click the drop down button. And then under the filter section, you can pick uh, whatever you want to add as a filter. And now you can see product name is added as a filter, but I don't really want it like at the top. So I'll put it to the right. And once your filter is where you want it to be, don't forget to click on the drop down and make sure to apply the filter to all using this data source. So what this would do is that it will use this filter on all the charts in the dashboard instead of just the chart that you selected the filter from. So let's put this to the test a little bit. Uh, I don't like how this filter is set up, so I'm going to change it to like a multiple value drop down list. So by default, the filter is applied to all, but I don't really want that. Yeah, let's uncheck all and make sure the filter is working properly on all the charts. So let's just select a couple of products. And yeah, there you have it. The value and chart is changing. So we know the filter is working as intended. And now I can toggle it back to all. And whoever end up using this dashboard can play with it as they want to. All right, so I'm going to add a couple more filters in here. All right, there you have it. We just created an e-commerce sales performance dashboard together from scratch. You should be very proud of yourself if this is your first top level project. So now all you have to do is that you need to click publish and this project will be permanently on the internet in your Tableau online portfolio. And now we're onto the last step, sharing your new awesome dashboard on your LinkedIn profile. 
So once you're on LinkedIn, head over to your profile. And in the Featured section, simply click on Edit and Add a Link. And just paste the link to your new dashboard here. And the title could just be, you know, the default. I think this works fine. And for the description, you can just write something quick. Data visualization for a UK-based e-com store. And now hit save. And voila, your awesome new dashboard is live. And when you go back to your LinkedIn profile, it's there to be viewed. Awesome. And if you feel so inclined, feel free to write a post about this new awesome dashboard that you just built and tag me in it. So I know someone out there is actually benefiting from this. All right, folks, there you have it. This was the step-by-step -step tutorial for building a Tableau dashboard that's going to help you break into data analytics. If you watched and follow along the entire way, now you have a new awesome Tableau dashboard that you should be very proud of. If you enjoyed this video and want more content like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on notification. If you're new here, my name is Oliver Pan. I'm a data analytics professional working in tech. I'll see you next time.